Good morning, good morning. My name's John Wright. It's 5.40 in the morning, and it is 3.10.24. And how would the Zodiac count that? Well, the Zodiac would count that, well, you could count that, uh, 1 and 3 is 4, okay? Or 3 and 1 is 4, or 3 and 10 is 13. So you could say, well, what's going to happen today around the world? You just don't know what's going to happen because 10, perfect, you know? That's the Zodiac way of the way they think and the way they count things if they're looking at the days. You know, I've picked, I think, seven times. I've picked five out of six numbers in the Washington State Lottery. Close, but no cigar. I also have a copy of the ticket here where I caught, won all those on it. My brother-in-law here, he has a, a tractor. I wrote down, I went through and figured out what the number was going to be for a lottery one night and I told them I said one of these five tickets is going to be a $10,000 winner and that's exactly what happened and the rest of them were all $20 winners so there wasn't one ticket that wasn't a winner and they know that if I have time and I could just focus on something I go after something and I win the prize you know that's how it is. Good morning, man that wants to work right now. You know, it's nice to see people driving around safely instead of unsafely. And because that I've came forward, things around me has got significantly quietly, quieter over the last week. But I'll tell you, when people upset people, that's what causes friction from coast to coast. These cars and stuff that rolls around, that's loud around our homes and stuff like that. You know, these here people, that are, it's a privilege to drive an automobile. It should be a privilege to drive an automobile to work and back or to the store and back, but it's not required. There's bicycles. You've got feet. You could ride a bus. But if your car is backfiring and popping and stuff around my house, and you're on my radar, like somebody that comes around here, their car pops constantly. My brother-in-law said, well, he's done that to his car on purpose. Well, some young person, it's a young male, I believe, driving around here with a car that should be probably in the in the auto wreckers area the car should be taken off the road because it's an eyesight you know and when people drive stuff that has it that's an eyesight they should be ticketed for it because what well maybe they should be investigated it for because there's some reason behind the reason they're acting out now when I was a kid and I got my first car from my brother Jerry. That car was covered in stickers. You know? Jeez, it has this kind of headers on it. It has that carburetor on it. It has that intake manifold on it. It has this in it. It has TRW parts. All these stickers that are on it. What the first thing I did? I took a razor blade and I shaved every one of those stickers off that car. Because that car had been run and beat by my brother. And it was taken in pretty good shape up there by Ken Sparkman. But nevertheless, when I got that car, it had been beat pretty bad. Except it had a racing engine in it that my brother Jerry got because he kind of ripped it off from Stevie Sargent. And I think I told the story about that earlier, too. Frank Peterson's building engines. Jerry's got to have this engine that's just, like, beautiful. He has this uh, small block Chevy, a 327, built for a Chevy Impala, a 1966. Well, he's, he's 
following signs too, by the way. And I don't know this, but everything leads to him doing such things. So he he has this really nice car. He put a brand new engine in it. It had a three-speed stick shift on the column. He put brand new bucket seats in it. It was a really nice car. And I'll tell you, he got a job out there at the mill. And somebody must have caught on about that D.B. Cooper st stuff because I'll tell you what. They had Jerry's car. Jerry had this Ford Fairlane. You know, they say that they raced for titles and the guy won Jerry's car, but Jerry has this car. That guy said, you know, that guy, I think he cornered him and said, you know, you're screwed. And I said, I'm taking your car. You can have my piece of shit. A fair lane, you know? Huh. Well, interesting. Jim Van Cleve, he has fair lanes up there in Morton, Washington. Jerry always wants what everybody else has. So, uh, I mean, that's exactly what it is, too. Jerry always wants what everybody else has. That's not like Jerry couldn't be a hard worker. But you employ Jerry, right? And you might have problems at your job site. Equipment might get sabotaged. Things break. He'll do something and he'll tear out something and cost the person money. He'll cost the person all sorts of money and grief. Matter of fact, I'll tell you, after we came back from Nevada, after I got back here from Nevada, from coming back after the 19, I believe it was the 1986 uh, Chicago Bull, or the the Chicago team that played the football team in the playoffs. I know they were the, the Chicago team. I want to say they were the Bulls, but that's a basketball team. But anyway, the Chicago Bears. So anyway, the Chicago Bears was in it, and they won the game. And I was sitting in the uh, Red Lion Inn by myself, you know, as they abandoned me in, in Nevada. And I decided to come back to Washington. And you know, my brother Jerry, after a few months of me being here, Jerry showed up here in Washington State by himself without Jan, his wife. And Jerry, me and Jerry went to work out here from a guy named Dennis James that worked out here at um, Rochester, Washington. He had a job down there at Mo Clips, Washington. It was a long drive down there every day to go to work. And Dennis James, he had a, you know, he had a problem with cash flow. We were always have to wait on our cash or wait till Monday or, you know, he'd keep us away from the banks and stuff. We'd have to cash it at the Yardbirds grocery store, our Yardbirds right there. We'd cash our check. We'd buy. 10%, I'd have to buy 10% of my check to cash that check there. So we're over there and, you know, we're not very happy with Dennis James and over how he's doing us. But Jerry's decided now he's going to do something to Dennis James and he's going to x lax his coffee of the next day. And he's already told me this. He plotted it out. Yeah, I'm not saying goddamn nothing. And the next day, you know, we're on our way to Mo Clips. Dennis James is driving. I'm in the front seat with Dennis. And Jerry sits in the back seat like we're chauffeuring him. You know? And literally, that he sits back there like he's being chauffeured right behind me. You know? Sits back there, sleeps on the way to work, whatever. You know, you sleep on the way to work. I don't give a fuck. But I sit up there and I sit with Dennis James driving to the job site. We talk throughout the morning. <coughs> so Dennis, when he leaves in the morning, he takes two thermoses. He drinks one all the way down to Aberdeen. And then when he gets to Aberdeen or someplace, he stops at a place every day. He goes in and gets a new he gets a new thermos full of coffee, throws it in the on the truck seat. He grabs the other thermos, 
and he pours a cup out of it if he has brought a cup from inside the store. So what he did was he goes in the store to get his thing of coffee, and Jerry says, give me that thermos. And I just reach down, I just hand it over. God damn, I, what am I going to do with this guy in the back seat? I mean, I honestly, I just hand him the thermos. He takes it on himself to open it up and drop a bunch of x locks in it and all of a sudden he just drops that thing just right over the the thing that's right there you know on the seat again dennis james comes in drops his thermos right there picks up his other thermos pours a cup of coffee and pulls out of the thing like that and you know i look back jerry's back there just like he's asleep looks like little gilligan's like little gilligan back there all, all cuddled up nice you know like no i wouldn't do anything like this and i'll tell you what that day progressed and dennis james about 10 o'clock in the morning you know jerry is waiting for him to start shitting his pants because he's going to get off work and cash his check at the bank and stuff on that friday and dennis james jumped up on the frictions of this yarder it's an old yarder that you actually manually have to jump up on it and use your weight and stuff to make this thing move so Dennis jumps up on it and all of a sudden the back of his clothes just goes wet he's crapped his pants you know he fucking <laughs> anybody see this you know he looks around I fucking just turn my head down I go to work you know and all of a sudden you know the yarder's not running for like eight or ten minutes and Jerry gives a little whistles and stuff and I come over the edge and I go like this he goes really you know he and Jerry go like this yeah we're going home and then, um, you know, here Dennis got to get those logs loaded before he can leave because he's got trucks coming and we're going to be pulling out of there about two o'clock in the afternoon. And, you know, Dennis is there and all of a sudden he cuts off that thing. He's got his rain clothes on. He's taking his clothes off. He's in rain clothes. He shit himself so fucking bad. So he goes in, um. Goes and says, get me my um, the tag off my truck. And I go get the tag, you know, fill it out, put it on the back of that load. You know, I'm branding the logs for him. And I'll tell you what, he reaches over, you know, grabs that fucking cup of coffee and goes like this to pour it in his thing. And all of a sudden, he knows the white foam on it. And he looks right at me and he looks at that and he goes like that and he just dumps it down. And he says, have you done something to my coffee? And I said, I have done nothing to your coffee. And, and he just looked over the hill. Boy, I tell you, Dennis James would remember that. Jerry will stick something in someone's food and stuff. Jerry will do something like that. I was poisoned in Monster Rock, Washington. And that just reaffirmed the things that was going on. You know, it's early in the morning. This is my first cup of coffee this morning. You know, and uh, my name's John Wright. My dad was the the D.B. Cooper guy, and I went through all these records yesterday, I'm tearing off the, uh, I got a wall of shame over there, I get up, I look at it every goddamn morning, so I don't forget what's fucking happened, and what my, you know, what I should be focused on, I'm here, I'm trying to save Americans, I'm literally trying to save Americans' lives, and my family has put me in this position where am I going to be ashamed to come forward because they've abused me in such a way and I've had murders happen and I've been told it's not me that's going to go to prison, John. It's you that's going to go to prison for the murder of Terry Shortridge. I said, I am not going to murder. I'm not going to prison for the murder of Terry Shortridge. You are. I can't be tried again. Double jeopardy. Well, this sounds like Donald Trump's shit. Because why? It's a Republican renegade crap that they've been trying to do in America. And it's almost 15 minutes. i got to get off this. Good morning, America. I love you.